All right, hey guys, Mitch here with the Audio Dabbler YouTube channel, and today I'm going to do just a quick tip on Obsidian and how to control the start position of a sample that you've recorded in, and you don't want to necessarily have to go in and move the playhead or move the start position of the sample. Let me show you what I mean. Um, let me go. I've got. I just initialized this patch. I'm going to go to sample. We're going to record a sample, and I got my microphone here. Welcome to the Audio Dabbler YouTube channel. Okay, so now we have this going on, and so. Welcome to the Audio Dabbler YouTube channel. Okay, so we got that, and you know, you know what I can I can easily do is I can go ahead and if I wanted to trim that first little section up, I could I could do that, and then. You know, well, we kind of want to play around with the rest of it, so I'm just going to hit X. I'm going to save this as Welcome 1 and hit Save. And so now when I play it on the keyboard here, Welcome to the Audio Dabbler. It's just going to play the whole sample. But what if I want to kind of adjust that start position to where it's, you know, maybe not welcome starting at Welcome. The, uh, well, well, maybe it want you know, wanted to go somewhere else. And so... If I look around all through here, there's nothing really that screams at me sample start position. Welcome. Well, Even well, like the well, phase well. has nothing. Now, if you're inside of Slate and you click on a drum, then you have an offset button here. If I actually click on the right one. And so what that's doing is that's moving the start position, or it's kind of offsetting where the start of the sample is playing. And so even automating that a little bit could be kind of get you some variations of a kick drum and kind of make it more like a timpani. But it's not necessarily obviously present inside of the obsidian synth on how you can do that but let me show you where you can get to it from and let's go to the effects modulation and so this app is deep and it has different little things and so you have to explore a lot of things and I'm going to continue to explore and share these little quick tips but if you click on the destination this is a modulation so it, whatever this is the source, and so if you're not familiar with modulation, it's basically you have a modulation source, and that's kind of like a, either a low uh, LFO, a filter envelope, a knob, you know, something else that's going to affect what another parameter does. And so I'm going to use a knob, and I'm just going to use knob 8, and now I want that knob to affect a certain destination. And in this case, I'm going to click on oscillator 1, and go all the way to the bottom to where it says sample start. Now if I wanted needed to do a multiplier, I'm not getting into all of that. And if I wanted the depth of control to not be as much, um, if I just wanted it to control a, control a small portion instead of a all of the portion, then I would adjust that depth to 100 from, from 100 to something else. But that's just how I want it right here. And so now if I click on perform, Welcome to the Audible YouTube channel. Channel, 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 That's just fun. <laughs> but... But you see, that's really, really useful. YouTube, YouTube channel, especially like for a performance. Do the audio dabbler, audio dabbler, YouTube audio, the do the audio. You know, and if if you had a little more musical sample or like a pad that was evolving and it was long, and you kind of wanted to mess around with the start position to get some variations of how the sample YouTube. starts or a bass or like I was doing with a timpani with the bass drum and kind of adjusting that offset. So this is where you can find the offset inside of sampler or inside of obsidian is you have to actually map it. But you could also, if you wanted to, go back in here, change this to say LFO1 and go to the edit. Welcome to the audio 
And so now it's using this LFO to kind of move that playhead back and forth and, um, you know, the way the LFO would work it. Welcome. So that's that's kind of fun as well. You can have it sync. And if you want to change the side to some like random loop. So there's a whole lot of options there when you're working with a sample. But you just got to kind of dive in a little bit and um, kind of understand what all of this stuff is doing. And so that's super, super fun. And now that LFO has changed to, it has sorted itself back up here to the start. Now you can also do a loop start and loop length. But I will explore those and get in those into another video. But hopefully this is at least gets you started with Nano Studio 2 if you want to work with some samples and get some kind of weird things going on Audio dabbler. YouTube YouTube channel and, you know kind of some random Welcome. things or just mess with some samples and you want to just because before or if you don't use the start point and you go into the sample then you have to oops you have to edit the sample and then you'd have to go in and delete the part that you wanted say you only wanted this part then you'd have to go in and delete that and save it as a new sample which is kind of tedious and it, you shouldn't have to do that and it's not necessarily apparent in the app and so that's why I wanted to go over this and show you that you can easily map it to a knob and adjust that cutoff or that start position pretty easily so thanks for watching guys hopefully this was helpful and useful leave a comment on the video of anything else inside of Nano Studio 2 that's kind of if you if you've got it and you want to kind of know about it just let me know in the comment anything that I can dive into do some quick tips on show you how to do it and I will uh, be happy to do that for you as always all other links are in the description patreon PayPal and all of that good stuff and share it on your favorite social media site and I will talk to you later Thank <laughs> you.